challenge of social media in China. And we will have uh, two speakers. Uh, one way, the third speaker cannot make it. Okay. So uh, the, uh, actually both of them have been, just now we're talking about repeaters, okay, who keep coming back to uh, Cirque. Both uh, Zhang Zhan and uh, uh, Gian Luigi uh, Negro, both of them presented multiple times in earlier uh, Cirque uh, conferences. So uh, without further ado, uh, Zhang Zhan will start. Uh, with a presentation on uh, Rock the Journalism, the function of Weibo in foreign media's news practice in China. of this paper. Everybody knows that the new communi communication technology inevitably raises questions about the extent of existing media, I mean legacy media, will change as a result. And many studies have been focusing in this area with different focuses. For example, some studies on the right top that were talking about, um, I mean this change is particularly true in news practice and journalism. So uh, some studies focusing on how uh, the internet, the new technology is in influencing the news production and consumption of, uh, on, on, online. And also some studies on the laptop, they focusing on how, uh, whether the internet will change, put some challenge to the print newspaper. Other studies focusing on whether uh, the uh, platform from internet will uh, change the journalist's practice in, in daily news reporting and also other studies focusing on whether the media digitalization has affected the journalistic practice in general. Uh, Twitter starts its service in 2006 and with the increase of the users on Twitter, those individuals start to participate in the news practice in the Western domain. And also many, many researchers focusing on this, both about how uh, journalists and correspondents are using Twitter and involved in, 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 in Twitter in their news reporting, as well as research about how those Twitter users on the platform were like participate in their news reporting. Uh, some scholars like uh, Papa, Papa Jarisi in 2009 once argued that both the uh, blog and microblog, for example, Twitter, uh, rise to prominence when access to mainstream news or other communication media is restricted or blocked. And this is in the case of China, as everybody knows. In China, uh, due to the largely restricted news media environment, the new media, ICT, and, and also uh, like the new service, for example, the microblog blogging is changing maybe more importantly, I mean, the change in China is, is more dramatic than other countries in the world. Uh, so the Twitter-like platform we call Weibo in China started its, its service in 2009, and also now it has more than 500 million users according to the data published uh, last year, the end of last year. And also some studies uh, talking about Weibo studies about uh, the function of Weibo played in social or political phenomenon, as also our previ previous researches already show us in the morning. And some, uh, some domestic Chinese researchers did some research of also about how 
Weibo is involving in the journalistic practice in Chinese media, but very few uh, international scholarship paid attention to Weibo's function in journalism practice in China. And also there's almost no study about how Weibo is influencing the foreign media news making in China. And why this is important? Partly because in the recent years, China is, uh, is receiving more and more uh, media exposure in the world. And also those international media, they were playing a very important role to framing China, to shape China's image to the audience worldwide. And another thing also regarding to the news media environment in China, those correspondents who work in China, they always find difficulty in getting in touch with the public. They are not so easy to find someone want, want to talk to them or to be interviewed by them. So in this case, Weibo start to also help those foreign correspondents in China to, assi to assist in them to, to get uh, the idea of how public think about those hot topic going on in the Chinese society. Uh, so according to this literature review, and also, um, I just want to show some questions I raised up here, but I, don't, I cannot show from, from, from here. Some questions and uh, hypotheses about this research, according to the literature review and also the research gap I, I found out. Uh, those questions are whether the concern about Weibo in the three news, European newspaper I choose rise significantly through the year from 2010 and 2012. The second question is about the three European newspaper shared more or less the same subject matter interest in Weibo rela related news or not. The third question is about the utilize of Weibo as either a news resource or a painting for an increased amount of three newspaper with different regarding in each paper's editorial line. And the fourth question is about Weibo, whether Weibo has become one of the effective access for foreign correspondents work in China. And in order to answer those questions, I use both content analysis and also index interviews as a method I use for this paper. And in the content analysis part, I uh, choose newspapers from three countries, the Great Britain, France, and Germany. It's because the newspaper circulation of these three countries contribute more than 60% of the whole European market. And also audience in these three countries, they were more trained to read newspapers than other countries in Europe. And these three newspaper I choose for the three country, they were all like leading quality newspaper in the three nations, and also their circulation in the in, in each country was uh, quite high. Uh, so I connect. I I I, I use the Factiva database to connect all the news reports regarding with Weibo among the three newspaper through three years from 2010 to 2012. And I, I did my coding regarding to the news amount, the different use of Weibo among the three newspaper, and I also classify uh, a, a category, the subject matter uh, news topics of the three newspaper, and also did some uh, two case studies in order to understand in detail what is the similarity and what is the difference among the three Euro European newspaper when they report about Weibo in China. And uh, after this, I also did a field study with uh, more than 20 interview with correspondents, foreign correspondents and also news assistants who are working for foreign media and based in Beijing and Shanghai this much. So here we can look at some results. This is a number of news items about Weibo in the three European newspaper. We can see in 2010, although Weibo already started service in 2009, but in 2010, very, very few attention from the three European newspaper were paid about Weibo, especially the Times 
had no report at all about Weibo in 2010. But dramatically, in 2011, all the three newspapers rise sharply their reporting and again the time starts to have 20 and also increase, I mean, uh, continuously increase to 40 in 2012. And from here we can see the, 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 the British newspaper and the German newspaper rise like uh, more dramatically than the French paper. But we will look back again after whether, I mean, what does it mean uh, later on. And here is the classification I draw about how Weibo were used in those news reports. And I define them into three categories. Direct quote here, I mean the journalists will quote the comments from Weibo users uh, directly. I mean they, they just simply translate the comments and put it in their reporting. The indirect quote here, I mean, the journalists will not quote the comment directly, but they will like uh, interpret in their own language, in their own way, about uh, about those opinions and comments on Weibo platform. And I mentioned it's only without any quotation, without any comments. It's only a kind of general uh, talking about what's going on on, on, on on Weibo when there's some news happening in China. So from these three tables, we can see um, the Times pay more attention than the two other newspaper um, general mention. And uh, the Le Figaro from, from, from France used more indirect quotes. And the German newspaper used mostly the direct quote. And it's very interesting to see the news reporting from this German newspaper that journalists will even also cite the name of the Weibo user, even if it's only a nickname, but they use it like a kind of a real quote, real comment from an interviewee. So we can also observe the data here about this German newspaper. Um, Here is a news topic about how Weibo was uh, talking in among the stream European newspaper. And the red part regards to the political news. The uh, green part is the social news, and the blue part is uh, economic news. So we can see here very uh, uh, obviously that political topics occupy most of the percent through the three newspaper through the three years. Especially for the times there, they occupy more than more than seventy five percent of the of all the news reporting about Weibo that year. And also here, the German newspaper used more or less eighty five percent of reporting uh, about Weibo in their report of two thousand twelve. And for the economic news, we can see uh, the Times and the Figaro pay more or less the same attention, but the German newspaper always pay very little attention about economic news when regarding to Weibo. And talking about the social news, the French newspaper were more balanced in reporting also social news besides political news and economic news. This is a table about the results I interview after my interview with those correspondents and news uh, assistants. We can see from here, here are those were correspondents I, I, I interviewed, and very few of them obtain Weibo account. And even for those one who has Weibo account, they use Weibo very little frequently during their daily news processing. And uh, less than half of them 
think Weibo can be a kind of uh, resource, news resource. It means they, they, uh, less than half of them think Weibo can generate some ideas for them to do some news stories. But if we look at news assistant instead, we can see another result that all, all of them, all of them has Weibo account, and all of them use Weibo very frequently in their daily reporting, I mean, assisting reporting. And also more than half of them think they can get some ideas from Weibo platform to know what they, they should report on that day. But if we look at this figure, almost all the correspondents and all the news assistants, they think, and they told me they used Weibo before as a, 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 I mean, they can directly quote and look, they can use Weibo as a place to find some comments from the public during their news reporting. So whether Weibo really mattered in foreign news coverage in China. We can see here in this table, this is the proportion rate of the news items about Weibo in the, three, in, in, in the two year, in 2011 and 2012. We can see even, if you remember the figure before, even Times and the German newspaper rise sharply the pure amount of uh, their news report about Weibo. But if we look at the rate, it didn't change so dramatically in these two newspapers. Instead, the figure of the French newspaper, even it rise, I mean, not as so sharply as the other two newspapers, but the proportion rate of Le Figaro is more than the other two newspapers. But we can see here is very, very few uh, percentage of the news reporting regarding Weibo in the three newspapers. And in order to uh, understand the similarity and differences among the three newspapers, I did two case studies. And, and the two, two case studies were chosen because all the three newspapers uh, refer to the same topic regarding the, the use of Weibo. And regarding to the time limit of today, I will only talk a little about this case, about Xi Jinping and the new leadership in 2012. 2012 is an important year in China, especially in the political sense, because the government finished its once in decade transmission into the new uh, leadership of the fifth generation. And, and, and it was one of the biggest focus among all the international media of that year. So not surprisingly, all the three European newspapers, they report about this. And also all of them uh, talk about the reaction on Weibo platform according to Xi Jinping and the new leadership during the time period of the 18th National Congress. And from the, um, the case study, I can see that the, the, the times uh, they use more the general reaction on Weibo. They talk about like uh, what generally the idea is on Weibo platform after Xi Jinping gave his speech during the 18th National Congress. And uh, so, uh, and the German newspaper uh, share the same the same structure as the Times. He also talked about how the reaction is on Weibo now, but he didn't mention any general information. He pick up some individual quotes, some individual users how they uh, were talking about Xi Jinping. And both these two newspapers, they, they, they both mentioned about uh, during a short period of time, Xi Jinping's name was blocked on Weibo platform. Both the, the British newspaper and German newspaper talk about it. And differently from these two, Le Figaro, the French newspaper, didn't talk anything about how the general reaction or individual reaction from Weibo users are uh, regarding to Xi Jinping after his speech. Le Figaro talked about Xi Jinping's wife, Peng Liyuan, one famous uh, singer in China, and didn't mention anything about uh, Xi Jinping's name was blocked on, on Weibo platform. Le Figaro talked about another political figure, Bo Xilai in China, and he talked about the relation between Xi Jinping and Bo Xilai, and how it's going on on Weibo platform at that moment. And, and these kind of differences can also be observed in this case, the U.S. case in 2011, that the British newspaper, they uh, mostly use like general reaction from the Weibo platform, 
the German newspaper pick up individual quotes, and the French newspaper tries, I mean, differently from the other two newspapers, and pay a special attention on some, something related to this issue, but not as the other two newspapers. And uh, so whether Weibo can be the new resource of reporting China for those foreign correspondents in there, uh, we can see that it's because of the uh, problem of the media environment in China. So those correspondents, they, 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 most of them, they, they, when, during the interview, they told me it's very difficult for them to find people to talk. Uh, including those important figures, maybe in some uh, company or from uh, government organization, and also for the like, common people in the streets. Most, most of them, they don't want to talk so much to foreign journalists. So in this case, Weibo platform at least provide foreign correspondents in China a way to understand a little bit the public opinion, especially for those Weibo users who are generally young, who are in a city with education and more or less has an average income of the city. So they can understand at least this group of people, what they react to those ongoing hot topics in, in China. And also some journalists also told me, uh, because on Weibo platform there is a kind of verified account. It means those, those users, they put their real name and also uh, put their like uh, profession and, 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 where, and which company they work for. So citing those verified account according to those foreign correspondents, it's like the, a real comment from the right person because it, it posts its comments to public so they can quote without any problem. But as we see from here, still the function of Weibo in helping or assisting foreign correspondents reporting about China is still very limited. <coughs> I mean, they still follow the traditional way in reporting news, only sometimes in some special cases, they will pay a little attention to look at the Weibo accounts. And also, most of them tell me they, uh, Weibo, I mean, it's, uh, for, those, uh, for, for those accounts on Weibo platform who is not verified, they were a little uh, worried about quoting those uh, uh, comments because maybe um, it's not so, uh, uh, accountable. It's not so so uh, w without a, a very good uh, cred credibility. So they were still in the way to uh, grow uh, in, in, in the way to grow their use about Weibo. But still, I mean, this influence is very limited if we observe it. And uh, that is all for my presentation today. Thank you, uh, Zhang Jian. Uh, this year, we, uh, as uh, many of you already know, we had a record number of submissions and also a record number for a specific sub uh, area of research within China Internet Research, which is Weibo research. Okay. And, uh, and for the Weibo research, I think this year's rejection rate is really, really high. Okay. We got, uh, you know, the, so to, to, to hear a Weibo uh, research here, you know, there will be at least 10, you know, Weibo research cannot make it here. So uh, we are very lucky to have uh, Zhang Zhan to, uh, you know, share with us uh, her latest research okay, about Weibo and foreign correspondence, it's China respondents, but from uh, Europe. We would have some time, uh, maybe two to three questions, uh, you know, for, for now. Anyone have some quick questions to ask or comment? Yes, please. Yes. Please, uh, at, at any time, by yourself. Oh, sure, I'm Jason A. I'm now at the Citizen Lab University of Toronto. So um, that was a fascinating uh, presentation. I absolutely, we, we can literally see it in the paper every day that um, there has been this rise, and I'm glad you have the empirical evidence to prove it. But my question is, um, how, how much of a role is it because of mainstream media's, uh, is there, is, how much is it uh, related to a shift in uh, trusting and, and utilizing uh, social media as, as quotes, and how much of it is labeled as potentially being this exceptional platform that uh, the, it makes it so easy to acquire and locate content because, um, so how much of it is, is the, the change and shift in thinking about using social media, how much is it uh, uh, labeled as weakness? I guess one way of uh, looking at that or investigating that question might be 
looking at um, whether mainstream media views, say, previous iterations of social media, like for instance, Netties or other PBSs, like in 2000, did you look at maybe from 2008 to 2010 whether uh, mainstream media was supporting, from, say, PBSs and other things like that? Thank you. It's a very good question, but I cannot answer so clearly about the answer of it. But I, I know that those foreign correspondents working in China. They were gradually, they are more intended at least to use those comments from Weibo platform for those verified accounts because for them, they are like a real resource. But for those accounts maybe without a name, they are, they are very careful still now in quoting those, those, those quotes. And we can see, for example, the Times, most of the time, the Times will only quote like generally the understanding on Weibo platform. They will not use like German newspaper with specific, like a nickname, it means nothing for, for, for the foreign for correspondents. And I, I still I didn't look at the uh, also the utilize of uh, like internet content before, for example, the blogs or BBS. But it's interesting. I mean, trend. I mean, maybe I can compare in the future. What's the difference between? I mean, the pra news practice inciting the, the the older platform and the new platform as well. Thank you for your <coughs> suggestion. And also uh, because Zhang Jai explained her methodology is just use Factiva. Okay, we can all use Factiva to, you know, check. Yeah, how often, for example, is Ren Ren or Twitter okay, has been used as source and to compare. Okay, so that uh, will be definitely broaden our understanding. We have a question here. Yes, I did. I wanted to thank you for a lovely presentation. It's very interesting. And I'm very interested in the, new, the role of the news assistants because the 100% rate that you achieved obviously has to do with the fact that I'm guessing they're Chinese and they're young, they're urban, they're educated. Mm -hmm. um, have you thought about analyzing the impact of using Weibo as a source as a result of the news assistant as opposed to the journalist? Yeah, I, I have been considering about it, and I think both for Chinese journalists and Western journalists, they were trying to involve in more the new media now in, in, in their news practice in China. And I will maybe focus a little bit more in the future about also how, I mean, the difference between these two group of journalists in this field. Yeah, I was a little stunned by that piece of, you it's know, an important piece it's of very that. important, yes. Um, and then I want to focus on that. And of course, what was missing there was that the, uh, the news uh, reporters themselves, the correspondents themselves, mostly did not have Weibo accounts. And I'm imagining why uh, American reporters have Twitter accounts. And it's largely not perhaps to gather information, I'm not sure, but rather to promote their own uh, kind of work. Mm -hmm. uh, and so the reason that people have Twitter, I, I suspect, and American correspondents have Twitter, is to say, I just published this, and you should read it. Uh, and I'm, so it's striking that the, uh, the Western correspondents don't have uh, Weibo accounts, because it means that they're not that concerned about having the Chinese, developing a Chinese market for their work. No, is I that because their work is unavailable? Uh, what's going on? Yeah, it's interesting because I, I think uh, most of them didn't have a uh, Weibo account because of language limits. Maybe they can, I mean, even some of them can speak Chinese, but they cannot read so many Chinese posts every day. But all of them ask their news assistants to check every day on Weibo platform. And, and I, I think also uh, for those foreign uh, correspondents, I think they were, uh, it's still limited now to see the, 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 the way they use Weibo as Twitter. I mean, but, but we can also, we can observe in, in the Chinese journalist way, some Chinese journalists they have their Weibo account and they can like talk to and make a real conversation with the audience at the same time. I think it's still a long way to go for those foreign correspondents really set up this kind of conversation between them and the real public in China. But we can, we can see in the near future. I hope we can, we can observe it. Thank you. Okay, any other quick question? Yes, Patty. Yeah, I didn't do this part of research in this paper, but it's very interesting to observe for sure. I mean, mostly those uh, uh, Weibo, I mean, mentioning about Weibo through the three new, uh, European newspaper, they were like maybe one the same day or the, the day after. 
and also they will switch their focus to another news reporting afterwards, and we, I, I cannot find any, any more that inches. But it's very interesting also to see, I mean, the, the, the time limit for them, and also I mean, a lot of issues happen in China when some political, uh, especially relates with political news, they will censor it in, in a very quick time. So we can only obtain those Weibo paths in a very limited time period. But this is very interesting. I mean, area that maybe I should also pay attention to in the future. I think. Yeah, this definitely was another crucial dimension for time. Okay, because how can you verify that if it disappears in five seconds? <laughs> all right, yeah. and uh, uh, probably you know some of you already saw this uh, latest study by the. Uh, Harvard team, okay, uh, the Gary Keane, okay, study from the May issue of American Political Science Review. It's a big data analysis, and uh, it's very relevant to the discussion here, especially about the the censored, okay, which uh, Weibo are disappeared or wi which are remained. Uh, so I want to point that. Why my, uh, my I have a quick question about these three newspapers. Okay, I know the first two, not the third one. Okay, but uh, the uh, what type of newspapers are they? Okay, for example, are they, you know, the uh, classical studies, okay, you know, in the UK would show the elitist, okay, newspaper when they cover China. It's actually very different from the market-oriented, like, uh, popular kind of press. So what, can you, can you just uh, introduce very briefly about this, what kind of, uh, you know, newspapers yeah, they are? And I mentioned very briefly in the presentation that all the three newspapers, they were quality newspapers. So they were elite newspapers. They were not those kind of popular newspaper for the mass. And I choose these three as basically b b uh, from my dissertation. I mean, it's a it's a bigger database of all the uh, contents about China through these three newspapers. And the reason why is I think the quality newspaper they were more uh, balanced when they report about China, not like those popular newspapers that were only focusing some very sensitive or they will use a big title but without a real content. But for the quality newspaper. Most of the journalists, they were more serious in reporting about China and also their focus in politics, economics, the society were much more balanced. So I think it will provide a, a better idea in understanding <coughs> how the, I mean, the, the opinion of those foreign, um, of, of the uh, European journalists are, are now, I mean, doing reporting mm -hmm. and how they think about China through this point of view. Okay, thank you. Uh, we will return to uh, Zhang Zhang at the end, okay, after uh, Jia Luigi's uh, presentation. And his talk is going to be about the real name registration system. Yes. Uh, all right. Thanks so much. And good morning, my name is Jia Luigi Negra. I'm a PhD, assist, uh, PhD candidate at the Universita della Svizzera Italiana, assistant editor and colleague with Gian at China Mid Observatory. Uh, I'm going to talk uh, about the real name registration system, in particular from uh, the microblog point of view. So I would like to just provide uh, an historical overview how that uh, system took form, and afterwards I would like to provide some uh, differences and uh, similarities with the former experience of uh, real name registration system uh, attempts in the case of VBS and blog. I would like to start my presentation with this article that which, which was published uh, in, December, uh, last Decem in December of last year, the 18th, on um, Remin Rebao, uh, he was daily, uh, in which, which was titled, The Internet is not outside the law. It was just a, one of many articles to, uh, like that, that every day are present in, 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 the, in the official press. In that case, uh, internet, generally speaking, was just considered a vehicle of rumors as misinformation as a platform for information sharing. And there was uh, expressed the great expectation uh, for Chinese citizens to be aware of the law, uh, which law they will see, and take responsibility of the or words uh, published online. So it was quite singular that the same day, the CCTV uh, news report commented this article supporting this idea. So probably there was something behind. And, uh, is the, and in fact, the day after, uh, People's Daily published another editorial in which it was possible to define better which, which was the real problem of the internet ex ex explained the day before. And uh, in this case, the, 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 the real problem was the anonymity. 
which uh, and the, the strategy, the argumentation approach that you use the people's daily in this uh, in this case was that uh, was to compare the Chinese case with the Western countries. In fact, in, the, in this article, um, the, 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 the journalist um, referred to explain that uh, the problem of anonymity is not only in, uh, in the, it's not only it's not only a Chinese characteristic, but is also present in USA, Germany, but also Asian countries like uh, Thailand and Singapore. Moreover, it, uh, the, probably the most interesting, uh, interesting part of this article, uh, it mentioned the Norway, case, the Norway case. Because uh, um, the, the 14th December of 2012, the Ministry of Ju Ju Justice, the Norway, in Norway, published a proposal for, for, for public comment recommending that the country's criminal code be changed to incorporate a new definition of public space and public action. So the editorial shared the idea according to which internet should not be considered a public space anymore. So they use the Western countries approach in order to, uh, to, to apply the real registration system in China. Then um, Christmas times for us, and probably, pro probably this is not neither a coincidence, uh, the Xinhua agency published another article supporting the implementation of uh, this, the real name registration system uh, in order to safeguard internet users uh, from uh, def defamation and fraud. And for that occasion, it was also interview uh, the um, director of the Commission for Legislative Affairs of the National People's Congress, who is Li Fei, who stated that such identity management, that is the real registration system, could be conducted backstage, allowing users to use different names when publicizing information. So this was, there are just a small collection of articles who were oriented to deploy the real name registration system. Then we saw, uh, then, uh, then there was also the practical action. In fact, Beijing, the city, the municipality of Beijing decided to uh, support this strategy and there were three administrative sections that, is, that are Beijing Public Security Bureau, the Communication Administration Information Office and the Beijing Government Press Office who played a quite active role in order to promote uh, this experiment in the city of Beijing. There were um, the biggest uh, microglobe companies, uh, which of course include also Sina Weibo and uh, Tencent, also decided to achieve one goal, uh, sch uh, scheduling a deadline. By the 15th of March, uh, Sina Weibo wanted to reach 60 million verified, inter uh, verified um, internet users. But the result was uh, a little bit far from the from the, um, from their um, for their initial in, in, initial initial purpose. In fact, there were only six uh, the the fourteenth of March. There were only fourteen the sixteen millions verified internet uh, bloggers. And uh, moreover, it's also interesting to see how the. Um, a couple of weeks before the deadline, Sina Web also published a poll online in which uh, uh, the majority of internet uh, microbloggers uh, express, um, express their idea to be against the implementation uh, of, of this system. So this is the um, user's point of view, but uh, another but another aspect should be considered because the first time that uh, um, micro microblog real implement uh, real name registration system was studied was in August 2011. For that occasion, the Ministry of Public Security also provided an API for companies uh, to create the national ID uh, database, which, according to some analysts like uh, famous uh, Bill Bishop, would have a cost of five RMB for each query. So, pro providing um, a huge economic pressure for, for um, the most important microblog uh, companies. And it's probably not a, fact, it's not a coincidence that uh, two of the major social networks, that is, um, in the case of microblog, this uh, Baidu Shuoba 
uh, was uh, obliged to close its service uh, one month after, and the Ren Ren was to obliged to uh, to make some uh, personal adjustments in order to uh, deploy the real name registration system. Of course, the, um, the the feedback of the official press uh, was not very uh, amused of the result uh, provided by Sina Weibo. And so, in an editorial published on uh, uh, last April, there were uh, a critic addressed against the ap apathetic ideological approach of uh, a lot of uh, party officials. Um, there was also a critic for the um, um, some microblog platform which which actually take profit, take benefits from the dissemination of rumor. And um, and the last one is uh, of course uh, the, the the worries uh, for the stability of the, 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 the Chinese society for dissemination of rumor, which compromise uh, the, the, the the stability. So I wanted to pick up just the three cases uh, that uh, uh, probably can explain uh, the necessity of. Uh, uh, of, the, of, the, of the, the implementation of microblog uh, real registration system. The first one is dated on May 2010 with the creation of the so-called Anti-Rumor League. Uh, this is a group of uh, netizens, bloggers, uh, who uh, describe themselves uh, um, as uh, through secret vigilance, auto identity, and uh, neutralize untrue in, China, in China's microblog sphere. Of course, in that case, the official media Priced, um, were very supportive um, for this for this project. In fact, in August 2010, there was another editorial published on People's Daily, in which it's possible to read um, to read that the the, 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 the journalist appreciated the, these activities, uh, writing that in less than three months, the anti-rumor league had touched uh, the key points of new media. Moreover, they also stated this also stated that activities like these proposed by the Anti-Rumor League are a good way of promoting the self-purification of, of public opinion and of supporting rational expression of people organized or people organized participation. The league is the expression of the sense of citizens' social responsibility. So it was this this uh, this episode was of course uh, Mm, as su very supportive for the implementation of the real registration system. The second one uh, is uh, a quite standard case because we we all know about this, uh, the typical rumor which was spread on the um, on the on the, the, on the platform and uh, yeah and we all know that it was untrue because during the summer there was this rumor according to which uh, Jiang Zemin was was dead. So the the, the, the response of the offi of the official micro of, of the platform was uh, uh, very quick. In fact, everything related to the case of uh, John Zeming fake death was censored. Not only the server name, but also uh, some reference to the river because he can refer to his uh, to, to his surname. Also, some apparently innocent uh, military jacket. Uh, refer to the uh, hospital in where the presi former president uh, um, where re was recovered. And the last one, according probably the most important from the historical perspective, is uh, the suspension of Trump comments both on Sina Weibo and on Tencent Weibo. Because it was the first case uh, that the comment in the, the microblog uh, history that the, the comments were totally suspended. It was after a plethora of rumors about a coup in uh, Beijing organized by Alice of the deposit of Shilai. And uh, it was after this, uh, uh, after this episode that uh, there was a necessity to promote a new juridical framework, framework with a new set of rules for uh, Chinese microblog management. So it's just as an overview of the story of microblog management, but we can find something very similar six years, er six years earlier with the, with the shift from BBS platform to the blogs. We all know that 2005, uh, there is a, a wide uh, literature about it, is considered the year of the um, terrific uh, blog, uh, the, of the terrific growth in, for uh, Chinese blogs. But uh, at the same time, uh, a report published uh, the same year by the Chinese Academy of Social Science uh, 
um, and directed this, this uh, survey was directed by Professor Guo Liang, uh, uh, informed us that uh, more than 45% of uh, uh, interview people still prefer BBS instead of block. Because the reason was because not only the communication structure of the, of the platform were, um, was more horizontal, but it was possible for everyone to, who wanted to write freely online to hide their ide identity uh, behind a nickname. But uh, the first case, um, after the first case happened in uh, 2004 uh, at um, Tsinghua University, a lot of uh, BBS uh, had to uh, deploy the real, the real name registration system. Uh, the, um, at that time, Tsinghua University uh, decided to avoid, uh, to ban every single user who were not, uh, a not only a Tsinghua uh, student, uh, university student, but also who uh, didn't provide, were not provide their ID. So another study um, published by Rebecca McKinnon in 2006 proved that uh, this, uh, um, this decision, this, um, this trend lead a lot, of blog, a lot of people to move from uh, um, the BBS platform to the blog, to, to blogs, because they could, have, they could still uh, use uh, their anonymity um, benefit. But after one year, again, the necessity to deploy this uh, real name registration system. At the end of 2000, 2005, the Ministry of Information Industry decided to, uh, to deploy, the, to, 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 to implement this system with the uh, cooperation of the Chinese Internet uh, Society. And also in this case, there were uh, four cities selected to have uh, pilot, a pilot, a pilot, a pilot uh, um, studies or attempt, but in, also in that case, the organization, the planning of the implementation of the blog real registration system had some lacks. It was not very uh, consistent. In fact, a member of the Chinese Internet Society stated in the interview for People's Daily that it was an, um, an emergency for them. They received a request for the Ministry of Information Industry just one week before the real implementation. There are similar steps, there are, st there are some, some uh, mm, simil similarities between the blog, uh, mm, BBS, uh, and uh, microblog real registration system uh, um, attempt to, to, to establish this system. Uh, now, on the, the left, we can see one of the um, most popular BBS platform who tried to deploy the BBS real name registration system, uh, which was also uh, mm, appreciated, uh, officially appreciated by the government. In fact, in 2016, it counted more than uh, 10,000 elite users who actually subscribed using their real, uh, um, the real name. But on the other hand, the economic uh, uh, issue that arise before still remains. Um, in interview released to China Daily, the so-called uh, pioneer of the of Chinese bloc, who is called uh, Fan Xingdong, uh, stated that uh, the real in 2000 and 2006 stated that the real name uh, system will only lead to the exile of bloggers to foreign blog service. To, to service providers, and also for that occasion, and also complained about the cost that we have to to face uh, if the real if the real name registration system uh, would be really applied, something like uh, 6.4 million dollar, and. Um, it's not probably a coincidence, and this is interesting, interesting to see that this time the critic was uh, for um, for the Chinese government, and the, the, I mean he was talking with Chinese. But in this case, in the case of Sina Weibo, um, the interlocutor is uh, American because uh, in, an official, uh, in an official form uh, realized by Sina for the United States Security and Exchange Commission, Sina officially complained, or at least uh, um, arise some doubts about the real implement the, 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 the concrete implementation of the real name registration system that uh, officially could uh, 
uh, affect the, uh, could have a material and adverse impact on their share price. So basically the situation is, is, is still the same. BBS companies, uh, platform, uh, blog and microblog companies are always to, uh, still, still to find a compromise between uh, uh, business model, which is uh, the consumerism, to, to, to be ready to accept uh, the state control needs and uh, also to be, uh, to, be, to, to be close to the social interest. But probably the case of a synapse, in, this, in the case of a microblog real name registration system, we cannot, uh, we cannot one uh, small change. Because for this occasion, Sina Weibo, even though complain about uh, some economical issues, ta it, it actually played an ac a more active uh, role than, uh, BB in, than in the case of BBS and, uh, and blog. Because it, it also organized some conference with the government uh, to, 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 to support this, this project. And uh, this could be considered uh, an attempt to demonstrate its uh, loyalty but also as a chance to create ways of uh, fraternizing with officials and directly lobbying on important po policy issues. This is in the case of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of Sina Webbo. But uh, another problem that is probably more, more, uh, more difficult to solve, apart from the, the econo economical one, is that still uh, Chinese still uh, are still rookie. Both companies and uh, Chinese internet users are still looking for a, a clear definition of the real name registration system. In fact, both on um, Baidu Baka and Hudong, which are the most popular uh, uh, wiki uh, encyclopedia in, in, uh, in the Chinese internet, there is no, there is, is, is clear, uh, it is argued that uh, there is no clear definition or model. So this is a long way to, to understand the, the, the real problem of uh, application of the real registration system. And it was my presentation. Thank you, Gianluigi. It's a very uh, interesting uh, presentation, especially if we go back to this side. Before I listening, I, I listened to his presentation, I was thinking about the state control would be much larger and much central to the real uh, name registration system. Although, okay, he has been very humble, okay, saying there's a long <laughs> way, but at least from the, he has uh, presented enough that the centerpiece is actually the companies, okay, it's not the state, okay, although the state is a uh, crucial part of the, the problem. And uh, before uh, I open the floor, just to share very, very quickly, in one of my previous uh, lives, I was a very proud BBS board master. Okay, I, I was master banzu for a couple, okay, uh, BBS, okay, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, communities, but because of the real name system, okay, I couldn't, I, I couldn't verify my true identity with uh, uh, you know, BBS authority, so I was, uh, you know, uh, ousted, okay, I, I still think that was an illegal act. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, anyway, so the, the floor is open, please, any question for Gianluigi? Go ahead, yeah. It'd be interesting, again, have you, been, have you consulted legal scholars on, uh, there's a bit of discussion on, on uh, blogs discussing constitutionality <laughs> I'm flying to China in the sum for during the summer in order to collect more clear information about the juridical framework uh, that should, uh, should be set up in, in this field. But for, of course, I think that uh, uh, microblog in general is still uh, uh, playing. Uh, is, 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 I mean, I mean the, offici the officials are trying to shifting from the so-called rural law to the from rule by law to rural law. Is the ever-ending process that uh, is taking place also in the Chinese internet, not o not only probably in the Chinese society. We have a, a lawyer in the room who was like, uh, yeah. Yes, uh, I'm from Shandra, I'm at UC Davis. Uh, thank you for a fascinating presentation. I was curious whether or not you followed at all, uh, compared at all with Korea, uh, of course, which has very advanced uh, real name registration system uh, and has faced some kind of legal pressure uh, on this. Uh, and so one of the concerns raised in Korea in the courts has been exactly what you quoted from the 2006 China Daily News source that said 
we will lose uh, to competitors if we are forced to uh, register uh, locally. Now, that's different in China. It has a different uh, impact in China because the competition is barred in some sense, right? Uh, mm -hmm. So you don't have Twitter, uh, you know, which has no such uh, obligations uh, that it, it uh, uh, imposes at least. Uh, but uh, whereas in, uh, in Korea, you do have uh, you know, foreign companies that operate freely. Uh, but I'm curious whether or not there's any kind of uh, learning you know, it's very interesting that you say that the Chinese system operates behind the scenes, not you can still use a pseudonym uh, online, but that there's, is, if I understood you correctly, but that the registration has to occur with the, with the site. Have you thought about it at all, the, the Korean comparison? Uh, actually, I know I'm not. I had the chance to 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 compare the, the the two countries and the two markets, but you are right. Probably about the, the market, there is just less competitor probably than Korea, and uh, it was an issue that probably uh, took place after the Xinjiang riot in 2009 when. Uh, uh, the situation was totally different because the market, the microblog market, was very, very active, and um, there were a, a lot of competitors. Uh, and uh, probably, I, I, it could be a reason that uh, just two, four companies are left. I mean, and the the, the most important one is in a way. But I, I actually, if you if you have, if you ever look to the, uh, the, the the market share, is the the most dominant one. So the, 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 it could be a strategic reason to support to sustain just one company um, instead of others. Yeah. Okay, Paul. Uh, I think well, um, um, I could comment about the foreign case because I uh, met uh, Chu Ho Yun, uh, you know, and we're talking about the foreign situation. Uh, so the foreign policy would have to be unconstitutional. Um, but the other interesting thing was the, that the foreign site has been hacked, as you pointed out. Like the back of McKinnon spoke talked about how the Korean real name server was hacked. And the names like this sold in China <laughs> because the Korean uh, names have got real virtual goods that are valuable. Uh, because it's a real name, the Korean names are worth um, I think two cents a name. The American names are worthless <laughs> uh, and so the rest of the world. So the, the real names actually increases the value for piracy. Mm. I'm wondering whether you think that the, the Chinese learning from the Koreans would not therefore have a real name system in place. Actually, uh, w w what I've read and studied before is more oriented to the Western countries instead of the other Asian countries, because it was just used as excuse to argument, to, for argumentation, to, to really de de definitely implement the real registration system. But it's, uh, it could be very interesting to have this kind of comparison also between other countries, particularly the Korean one. Yeah, this is actually a common pattern, even when we talk about you know, the non-Western countries, for example, I think most people in the whole, you know, are, are concerned about real name registration in China, know something about Korea, okay? But then, usually people only know is that, oh, Korea has real name system, okay? And they do it in a very thorough way, therefore we should, okay? We should follow the Korean, but they don't know about the court case, they don't even know about the, the hacking, all these other hazards. So that's a, a very important uh, dimension to bring into the, the discussion. Yeah. Another really important part is also, I think I, I want to thank uh, Gianluigi for uh, you know, the comparison, okay? Just now we're talking about China, Korea comparison, but also the six year ago, six year now, okay? I think that's uh, fascinating. Is that what you're going to ask or something different, please? Go ahead, something different is fine, yes. Oh. to protect people's reputation and privacy online, um, which I guess is, is you know, one of the end results of um, a real name registration system, and then the, the imperative of freedom of expression. And I wanted to ask you in that section as well, and I didn't get a chance, but how do, do, you, do you have any, um, like can you elaborate at all about how this kind of plays out in civil society? 
the, to the history. What I saw until now about this case of the real rain registration system, there is not this kind of uh, feedback of the opposition that we already already in the, with that we already in the past. I remember in 2009 there was a very interesting case that is, was provided by the establishment of this program called the Grim Dam, uh, which imposed that, which, uh, which actually was an impo imposition to install some software on uh, PC and mo on most of the Chinese PC. And in the, end of, in the end of the day, the civil society was much better organized so that the, the, in the end of the day, the, 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 the system was... Uh, suspended and is still suspended after <laughs> since since 2009 um, in this case uh, never uh, is this case i think that uh, the feedback of the, from the civil society was not so high but i repeat uh, i don't know if it just it is, it is just a decision of uh, it, the, the civil society mm -hmm. actually play, played a, re a relevant role but in this case, also company, the, the role of the companies is, is, is very, is very high because they have, they have to, uh, they have to maintain a business model with their civil society. So yeah, the, 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 the company has to balance a little bit the request both of the government and uh, from the civil society itself. So you, you already consider civil society on this diagram, right? Civil society is somewhere yeah. here, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay. Any other questions? Yes, Roin. The, behind behind the, the, the censorship, uh, yeah. the censorship. Uh, again, it's a quite tough question about the, the, the censorship. Uh, I guess that uh, the, the, the most brilliant um, response in that is uh, the, the, the impressive job that made by the, um, the University of Hong Kong and this Weboscope program that you probably heard about, and uh, where it's possible to have a track of all the censorship item which they are uh, um, updated daily. But uh, actually, I have not a lot of uh, data for uh, for the to see the logic behind the, 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 the. For sure, most of the content is political, for sure. But I don't I don't see the the, the, the logic. The, the coherence uh, behind that, you know, the pro strategy, a strategy, a real strategy. Yeah. Maybe this is one place so we can again learn from the legal okay, discipline. There is a very developed China legal okay, studies field. Okay. And of course, you can check you know, the gentleman sitting next to you, King, King Hua. You know, he, he, yeah, he is yeah, the yeah, Hong yeah. Kong Yu, you know, the uh, blog sphere. Okay. Yeah, He's yeah. the mastermind behind it. Okay. But then the legal uh, uh, scholarship, especially when we talk about China's uh, media law in general, including China internet-related law, is, is very different from the Western logic fundamentally. Okay? The logic is not just why we need to control it. It's not just why we should leave any empty space. Okay? So that's a completely, if we look at going back to the constitutionality question, okay? from 1994, okay, even before China had internet, China had the telecom law, okay, it was at that time mostly designed for pagers, okay, so it was already set up all this constitutionality, you know, in order to prevent, okay, dissidents or, or, okay, subversive information, it was already there, okay, and then when uh, China had, uh, 1995, China had internet, and 96, 98, China started to have anyone, so if you look at, this is still in the law books, okay, Nobody is really remembering. According to the original late 1990s state re regulation, anyone going online should do real name registration with the government. 
But then 2000 and, uh, and, and uh, two th uh, year 2000 it was BBS. Okay, I was I was illegally removed <laughs> okay, in 2000. It's like the BBS leaders, okay, the 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 board ma masters. Okay, and then later on, it's anyone who's the same thing should do. So they they. But you, you are after all, so anyone going to a cyber cafe need to do real name okay, registration. Anyone having a mobile phone should have a new <laughs> registration. Yeah. Anyone, 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 and it continues. But then what you see is actually none of them. So this actually, okay, although in terms of rationale, it tries to cover, okay, in Chinese we say, right? Okay, so you have a you have a bed beyond the bed. You have uh, many layers of roof. Okay, that shows how vulnerable that building is. Okay, it's leaking everywhere. Okay, so so this goes back to uh, my very basic question uh, about Weibo. How many uh, Sina Weibo users actually are real name registered? Do you have any estimation? March, uh, last March were uh, 16 millions out of. Uh, 300 million at the time, so very limited. It's very last hundred, limited. last uh, November or last, you said March. Last? March. 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 Okay, because by the end of last year, it was more than half a million. Yeah. yeah. They'll have a billion, yeah, 500 billion. Users. users. Okay, so, so we are talking about really like 2%? Uh, yeah, yeah, very small. Percent okay, 2 or 3%. Yeah, yeah. So the 98% are not you know, in this registration system. Yes, sometimes. Yeah, and also I think this is because it's a new policy. So for those other users, I mean, like, like me, I didn't register any real name because I'm like other users. I think it's only for those new users also, if they want to use, start to use Weibo, they need to register with their real name. But for most of the other users, I mean, it's mm -hmm. okay. yeah, so there are many, many. Right. And there, there are also, steps. yeah, it's true, John. And it, there are also some technical limitations on the correct implementation of uh, Sina Weibo because uh, I read also that uh, who can subscribe from uh, um, foreign country, not, not China, can easily avoid the real name registration system. So again, if one VPN would be enough to avoid this, uh, this system. And I guess that the government is aware of this, uh, of this uh, limitation and pass by. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there are technical problems. And back to the question about the rationale, okay? I think if you look at this diagram, it's not only the state rationale or the citizens' rationale or technical okay, rationale, but also the company's rationale, okay? What Peng Hua just said, okay, is actually a very important part for the cost-benefit evaluation. Okay, what's the benefit we can get out of the real name system or we are paying more than what we can get out? One of the... Uh, at least, you know, I just, uh, you know, add up to your excellent analysis is that actually the, uh, one of the main revenue stream for Weibo is zombies. Okay, yesterday in another discussion, these are the automated, okay, they're not human beings. Okay, you cannot do real name registering for a zombie account because it's, it's not a human being. It's, it's one human being controlling many thousands of them. So, it, and this is actually an important part of the business model, okay, to, to create, you know, fake, uh, like a viral marketing. So there's a very strong, okay, uh, just now, uh, Peng Hua's point is about the security aspect, okay. But then this is, there's, there could be another, it's actually it's hurting their existing revenue not line for the so-called uh, water army, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the uh, fake Shrink. accounts, Shrink. right? So, so there, there should be other, yeah, I think if we, if we follow this, the next step is actually to go inside to look at the thing from the company's perspective, okay? Not just the co corporation or individual citizens. Any other question for, for both of our excellent Weibo uh, researchers? No other? Let me ask a very basic question, okay? Is, uh, are, are, are Weibo making things better or worse? Okay, then, then like a foreign, you know, correspondence in China, okay? Are Weibo making it better than, I think what, what we are getting, Jia uh, Luigi, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I think what I'm getting from your talk is we're actually getting worse, right? Or, or can you elaborate or, or, or you know? I think that, uh, yeah, there is, there is one fantastic, publication about this, about this uh, 
um, was this, this was published by the professor Hu Yong about the rise of cacophony, rising rising cacophony in the in the Chinese, in the Chinese, in the Chinese internet. I think that. Uh, this, especially for uh, in this in the case of the real reg registration system, uh, could be uh, represented very well in um, for, for, for the for affecting the, the civil society as well. So I think that uh, yeah, the future, the scenario, the the, the, the near future, is not so optimistic like before. The, the, especially for seeing a web board. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Again, looking at this diagram, okay, in the past, we used to only worry about the big brother. Okay, that's sometimes assisted by some small, you know, little sisters. Okay, but what you are saying is actually the, <laughs> the little sisters can be more, okay, uh, vicious and unpredictable than the big brother. And Zhang Zhang. Yeah, and in the case of foreign correspondence news practice in China, I think it's obvious it's getting better. At least they now they have one way to look at what the public are talking about, some things going on in the society. Even they don't quote it directly, but they can understand what people are thinking. So in this case, I think it's quite better. And also in the regarding to this uh, company uh, sector in this kind of state, con I mean, fighting with state control. I, I, I remember I talked to some someone working for like uh, who th those who delete comments on Weibo, and they told me they were also trying to give a little bit more space, even they know they need to delete it. Mm -hmm. But they, they are trying to give a little bit more time and more space for, for this kind of conversation to let it in, in the platform till they delete it some, 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 some day. Yes. So I think it's also should be observed also. Oh, yes. If there's time. Um, I want to follow up on that last question. In the United States, you see this tension between Silicon Valley and the American government where Silicon Valley recognized that its interests aren't exactly consistent with the interests of the central government. Um, it wants to offer uh, greater uh, speech, but not only that, uh, greater protection from surveillance in some sense than the central government wants. And you've seen kind of, uh, uh, you, you may not believe that, but I think that's at least certainly the feeling in Silicon Valley. Um, and so there's a kind of uh, tension between the two and a kind of pushback, and that's what I, so I'm wa wondering about the kind of economic interests of these companies versus the uh, state uh, demands uh, and the, the kind of, the, is, there, is that tension visible at all? Uh, or are they, that was hinted at in your last remark, but I'm wondering if you see that, if you can find it, evidence of it generally. Yeah, let me give you the example of Xinlang. I mean, why Xinlang Weibo got success in the market in China, why not other companies? And the, I mean, one of the most important reasons is Xinlang, I mean, they construct this kind of filter system. They know how to play the, role, the, the roles in China. They, have, they know how to deal with the government's you know, uh, uh, concern about the internet. So they build up this filter system so they can get into the market with the government support. And this is why it got success. And after that, it started to play also all the time in, in, in single little cases and also generally, I mean, they are, yeah, they are trying to give space to the, to the audience, to the users, and also they need to also still follow the rules from the government. And I can confirm this aspect because last year we, there was a conference here in Oxford and uh, was invited Alex Mu, who is the, was the CEO of Zosa, which, wa which was one of the most uh, active and performing microblog plot, micro plot platform before 2009 and recognized he had to uh, finish his, his company just because the cost of uh, censorship were too high, and the business model was very, very difficult to achieve. And uh, the big, the biggest was Sina uh, Webo and got the market, they got the government support somehow. And now is in this position to negotiate uh, its business model with the government request, and but also mm, so the civil society uh, needs. Yes, and the somehow actually, I hope everyone knows this is uh, open in the you know public space is that. The founder of uh, Sina, okay, who is still on Sina's board, is uh, Hu Jintao's son-in-law. All right, you should check that out. Okay, so this is, some, <laughs> is this something detail? different is from detail? the U.S. Okay, <laughs> like people tend to, you know, which you know, when, when since when was a major like IT corporation whose CEO, okay, former CEO, okay, is also the president's son-in-law. Okay, 
That's something with Chinese characteristics. Yes, Patty. <laughs> They tried their, uh, according to the last news, they tried their best to, to, to be the most, com mo mo the most uh, commercial possible. And uh, in the end they got, because uh, almost 80%, 18% uh, of their share was bought, recently bought by Alibaba, which is the most uh, uh, important e-commerce platform in, uh, in, um, in China, probably in one of the most important the, around the world. So definitely, yes, they are getting more and more commercial. And it probably this could be uh, one of the reasons that sustain, sustain the, the success in, also in China, because the, the Chinese users were looking for something like that. OK, we have five minutes. We have other? Uh, yes. Yeah, I, I think my, uh, I was just follow up on your point about the pushback with, uh, with companies and, uh, and the government. And I, I was just going to say probably it would, that pushback would get probably much greater as saturated the Chinese market, they have to go outward to acquire more users around the world, and certainly, um, it will, obviously, users around the world would not, would, would have greater pushback, like first, it would force companies to have greater pushback against the government in this sort of censorship system, which is not currently in place, so, so, yeah, just wondering what you see the future of Weibo is, and, um, and as they try and expand, maybe outside the Chinese marketplace. A Chinese China Sorry, so I want to add that it's not one way either. I mean, um, Iron Man, probably Tim Green, the soil maker as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah. there's a global industry interested in using the platform as well. And so those things also complicate perhaps the effect of any kind of mechanism. And apparently there is also a Japanese AV star, like actress, is very popular, right? Yeah, yeah <laughs> no, it's sorry. like using sorry. Weibo to you know, talk to her fans, you know, in China. It was very weird, yeah. Okay. But from the Sina Weiboy point of view, the official one, they seriously, they, for, I, mean, I mean, at least for the um, international market, they're considered this new application, it's called Weixin, uh, WeChat, a serious competitor. Uh, so I think that the future of Sina Weibo has to face, uh, is facing several problems. The government on one, the, the, the domestic market and also the international one because the competitors also f made in China are uh, mm, attacking their quotes. I mean, yeah. And I, I don't think that it will be enough to involve more uh, celebrities, uh, the Japanese celebrities, also a lot of American celebrities open their oh, yeah. account. Oh, yeah, Jeremy, Jeremy Lin way. is one of them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, uh, but till now, this uh, strategy is still... Uh, so far from uh, uh, economic success is even more, I mean, the result of, uh, the recent results uh, provided by uh, WeChat is much more successful than Weibo in uh, two or three years of its history. Yeah, but both uh, Weibo and WeChat, they were like approaching the world now. Yeah. They were trying to engage with the markets outside China. And uh, also I think um, basically in, in like South Asian countries, and also in Middle East, some countries, and also in Africa, more and more users are start using the, I mean, service provided by Weibo and WeChat. And I think m there, there were some discussion about maybe this is also kind of soft power with new yeah. technology of Chinese government to, to go abroad. But, I, I, but personally, I think many, I think it's for commercial interest for the company. And there is an interesting, correct, John, uh, totally agree. Thank you. And uh, there is an interesting trend that uh, is taking place from China, going uh, uh, to, to, to try to access foreign market. In my opinion, as I remember, it was 2008 when uh, Baidu decided to get the Arabic market, but there is uh, the Japanese one. But uh, so far, the results were so-so. Then there was the case of uh, Sina Weibo. We still remember that uh, last year in a, during our conference, we, we showed a picture of uh, the celebration of 100 uh, uh, million um, subscribers 
uh, on the Nasdaq. There was uh, uh, they, they, they bought a logo, to, to, they show a logo on Nasdaq on the Nasdaq, but that to celebrate. Actually, the the, the, the real market was uh, very very far from uh, for the concrete re con concrete result. But now we have uh, uh, Weixin, which has uh, almost 100 million, uh, as I remember. Uh, foreign users, I mean, users who are not located in China. So this is probably something changes. Get, they are getting better and better from uh, the idea to the image to the concrete result. So it's an interesting topic and a field to be analyzed uh, and the expansion of uh, Chinese services outside, internet services outside the platform. It's, it's interesting, it's challenging, okay. Uh, that is also why we need to thank our two excellent speakers for their great work. Yeah.